Hello, my friends. I hope you are doing well on this fine summer day. It is really warm out, so I'm inside enjoying the AC and some iced tea. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this ocean gouache painting step by step so that you can follow along or even use the techniques that I used to make your own original ocean painting. So before we get started, we're going to want to get all of our things together that we need, like our paint and palette and brushes, water cups and washcloth or paper towel. I'll leave a list here for you guys to look at of the items that I use to paint. And if you'd like to see some of the other supplies or a larger list of supplies that I use, I'll leave a link for you in the description. Once you have all of your supplies situated, you are ready to get started. So first, I'm going to tape my paper down to my workspace. This helps me keep my artwork in place while I'm painting, and it helps create a clean straight edge once I'm finished with the painting. I like to use a low tack tape to tape my work down. Usually a washi tape or a scotch tape works just fine. So before I start, I'm going to mark out my horizon line. The horizon line is essentially eye level in your scene. It's the line that separates the sky and the land, or I guess the ocean in this case. So I'm using a piece of tape to mark that line instead of pencil. You could use pencil if you'd like. But I wanted to really make a straight line, so I just used a piece of tape. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I find it to be really helpful. Alright, so I'm going to start with the sky first. I mixed a light blue color using blue and white gouache, keeping the paint rather thick and opaque, only adding a tiny amount of water to help move the paint around on the page. I didn't want to add too much water because when you do that, your paint gets a little bit too transparent. For the clouds here, I just kind of want to keep them subtle, so I'm just adding a small amount of white to that blue mixture to lighten it up on my palette. And with the same brush, I'm just using the edge of the brush to dab in the cloud structures. I can build the clouds up from here to be as white or as dark as I'd like them to be by just adding more white or adding more blue mixture. Here, I add a little more white onto the brush to make some lighter clouds near the horizon line. So once I'm happy with how the clouds look, I remove the tape across the horizon so that I can start on the ocean. So to lighten the sections in the top, I just added more white to the blue. But for the bottom ocean part, I'm going to make my blue mixture a little bit less opaque so that I can vary the lightness of the water without adding any white. Just having the paint be a little bit more transparent, you'll see some of the white from the page shine through, and that helps give the illusion of lighter sections of water. If you do not like working with transparent at all, you can just use a little bit less water and add a small amount of white into your ocean color to change up that lightness. At about two thirds or so down the frame of my painting, the water breaks a little bit and there are some waves that I want to add into this section. So I'm going to just leave the white space for now where I want the waves to be and continue painting the general large shapes of the water. And I'm also going to let my brush strokes look a little bit sweepy. Since I'm painting waves, it's a stylistic choice of mine to use those wave-like sweeps to help show the direction of the water. Once I have the general shapes down, I add in a little bit more of that same color to get some darker spots into where the waves break. When I look at the waves, they're not always all white where they break at the top. 
Sometimes you see little spots of water in between the sea foam. So I'm just trying to use the edge of my brush to capture that a little bit, making sure that my strokes are always going in the direction that the water is traveling in. While that dries, I mix a lighter ocean blue to start adding in to the areas of the ocean that are farther away. I start up at the horizon line and I use the edge of my brush to add in some very thin streaks of light blue with some gaps in between, kind of like a dotted line. This helps make it look like there are some waves in the distance. And as I move down the page with the distant waves, I separate my strokes more and more and this helps create the illusion of perspective. So the, the idea here is that when objects are farther away from you, they appear to be smaller, and when the object is closer to you, they appear to be bigger. So taking that concept and applying it to the waves, the gaps between the streaks that I'm making get bigger as they get closer to you, and the gaps that are farther away are smaller. So on some of the closer waves, I wanted to add in some brighter wave sparkles because also the things that are closer to you tend to be a little bit more detailed because they're closer, you can see them better. So I wanted to add in those little bits of water and foam that kind of float around the top or splash up. All I did here was mix in a little more white into the ocean blue color that I had already mixed. And very carefully, I spotted in some little waves and dabs and splashes. I tried to keep the water movement direction in mind so that all of the lines and dabs that I make are kind of going in the, that same direction. So I use the same concept as I cross over the breaks in the big waves and I make all of my little strokes and dots flow downward with the wave. At the wave break, I added in some extra lighter paint strokes or dots to make more sea foam appear in those areas. I like to use the boldest, brightest colors towards the front, so I used almost pure white here to paint the water streaks and spots toward the bottom of the painting. I also added in a little bit of watered down white and ocean blue mixture to sweep in at the bottom, just using light brush strokes to show some extra movement. I didn't want to work the layers underneath that were already dry because I didn't want to re-wet them. So it's important that if you do this, if you add a watery mixture over the top of already dried gouache, you don't want the under layer to re-wet and mix with your new layer. So let them dry all of the way and don't work your brush into that bottom layer too harshly. You wanna be really gentle if you're adding in some like transparent areas like this over another layer. So afterward, I had decided I wanted to add in a bit of darker ocean color. So what I did was I took that same blue that I had mixed for the ocean and I added in a very small amount of perylene black just to create a little bit of extra depth in the water under the sea foam spots. I think that that added contrast of the light and dark right next to each other really helps those lighter colors pop. Lastly, I went in with pure white gouache and I added in some extra water splashes. I made sure not to mix too much water in with the white because when you do mix too much water in with your white, you lose that opacity and the white can end up drying too transparent for your painting and it won't look very bright. It might even disappear completely. And of course that special moment because I taped my work down at the beginning, I now have the pleasure of peeling the tape off to reveal a nice beautiful straight edge around my work. 
I know that some of you have told me this is the fun part of painting that everybody waits for. I wanted to say that if you enjoyed this tutorial and would like me to make more like it, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for updates when I upload a new one. And if you have any questions or statements for me, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'd love to give them a read. I'd love to hear from you. And again, as always, thank you guys for hanging out with me today and spending your time with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!